Hello, guys, and welcome back to day seven of our PLL Championship Series. Today, we are continuing our coverage of the Championship Series. Uh, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. It does help out the channel a lot, and I will let Nolan and Ben get into it. Yeah, so Friday, July 31st, two games on the on the slate. We had Whip Snakes Chaos, Water Dogs Chrome. Uh, the expected outcome from Whip Snakes Chaos with the Whip Snakes taking at 12-7. Um, and then Water Dogs Chrome with what was an extremely another another extremely close game for the Water Dogs uh, that ended in a 13-12 win for the Chrome. Um, yeah, uh, we'll start off with what was a a pretty uh, is, it was what a pretty simple game to cover between Whip Snakes Chaos. Uh, a little bit better of an outing for the Chaos than their previous games, uh, but like usual with the Whip Snakes, another dominant performance at the faceoff dot from Joe Nardella. At this point, it's not really surprising. Um, and what has really been, like I said in the last Whip Snakes talk when they played the Atlas, is is I don't think this Atlas off or Jesus Whip Snakes offense um, got worse really. I mean, they've proven that Matt Rambo with Zed Williams and and Shanna Chuck and and Jay Carlson can do pretty much the same thing as you know with with Drenner and the sort. Uh, so it was definitely the right move for Stagnita to move on from certain offensive players and to just focus on keeping that defense because uh, that defense is doing spectacular, um, dominating the chaos and ground balls, thirty three to thirteen, um, which which leaves Kyle Burnlaw with a relatively easy job. Um, he finished with a sixty eight percent save percentage, so. He's obviously keeping up that that streak of um of good of good goaltending, but uh, there's not much in terms of game notes here. Like I said, a pretty predictable outcome. Um, and what was quite literally a, a extremely disappointing uh, performance from the chaos once again. Yeah, I mean, Nardella absolutely made. The chaos face-off specialists, his bitches. Thomas Kelly went four for 21, or 19%, and one of those wins was against Nardella's backup. Um, and then Jack Roulette went 0 for 1. Um, I mean, just another super dominant performance by Nardella. It's hard to beat a team when uh, your face-off specialist wins 86% of his face-offs um actually really good game by um by blaze reardon he had a 66 save percentage and he had 21 saves so just too shy of the record that he set just what yesterday two days ago yeah i i think you have to attribute some of that whip snakes face-off success obviously jernard ella gets his fair share because he he definitely wins uh clamps and, and stuff like that and and clean wins of course but uh on the more chippier face-offs which seems to be a majority of them at this point you have to attribute some of this face-off success to uh to michael Earhart, guys like tj camizio and tyler warner hit the wings um for that whip snakes uh face-off unit um it, which which is seeming to be really helpful. Um, obviously, John Ardella does his fair share of clean wins and then brings it right down to the offensive side of the uh, side of the field. But obviously, have to give credit where credit's due to that whip snakes wings. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, honestly, not a terrible game by the chaos considering how bad they were getting whipped on the faceoff dot. They were only five goals out, which is relatively still in the game, especially considering Nardella went 86%. Um, but yeah, just wanted to point out Matt Rambo, usually a goal scorer. We've seen a lot less goals and a lot more assists than him, uh, from him yeah. this year. Um, that, I guess he's pulling a lot of the attention. And as a result, Zed Williams is really thriving. Yep. He scored four goals today and is now leading the PLL in goals with 10. Yeah. Um, like I said, uh, props to, to to the Whip Snakes and, and Jim Stagnita for figuring out how to have success without guys like Ryan Jenner. Um, so yeah, chaos side. Uh, obviously, like Ben said, Rambo Williams were the impressive ones for the Whip Snakes. Uh, you could add a guy like Jake Carlson to that because he's been uh, fairly consistent for them as well. Um, for the chaos, I think I'm going to be bold enough to say this. I, I think the Redwoods won the Miles Jones Salcedo trade. Um, 
I don't think that's a shock to anybody, but I, I'm I'm pretty confident in saying that at this point. Um, obviously, next season could be an extremely different um, team for the Chaos. It could be a much better offense or or, or not, but we will see. Um, like Ben said, Blaze Rudin continues to have good games uh, in front of a, of a disappointing defense uh, who was just dominated on ground balls, uh, both defensively and at the faceoff dot as well. Um, I, I don't know if I'm a little confused as to what's wrong with this chaos defense. Uh, a year ago, you had the goalie of the year in Blaze Reardon, who's obviously still doing well. Uh, but in front of him, you had Jared Newman, uh, Dan Coates, you know, you know, the guy that they're still there, what isn't clicking, or is it just more of a, the opposing offenses are just exposing us at this point. Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of it boils down to um, the face-offs. I mean, we talk about face-offs a lot, but I think that's a pretty clear indicator of who's winning a game um, most of the time, especially um, in this PLL Championship Series. I mean, Thomas Kelly has not looked great at all. Um, yeah. His, his, he's 23 for 62 with a 37% face-off percentage. He has one assist. Um, yeah, I mean, just not exactly what you're looking for in a face-off guy, which is tough because he, he did have some rough patches last year, but, I mean, almost all the face-off guys were in the 50% range. Yep. Yeah, that's about it in terms of Chaos Whip Snakes. Looking ahead, Chaos move on tomorrow to play the Water Dogs, so at least only one team will be the 0 and 4 team. Uh, and then Whip Snakes play Sunday against the undefeated Archers, uh, which will leave one team being the only 4 0 team. So, what is uh, a little bit suspect, to be honest. Uh, that's obviously a joke, but but you got the two all defeated teams and the two undefeated teams going at it for the last two matchups, um, which what should be a, a very interesting conclusion to the four game play in, uh, I don't know, series or whatever you want to call it. Uh, but I think I think the the Whip Snakes Archers and Water Dogs Chaos you can't really predict a winner for those. Uh, it truly will be just an all out battle. All right, yeah. so that sounds like you we guys got, are pretty much wrapped game. up here. We got one more game. Oh, you do now? Yeah, Chrome Water Dogs, real quick. Oh, okay. You're making it sound like you're wrapping up. Oh you my bad. Me. We're ma we're wrapping up one game. We'll, right, ma we'll make right. this one quick because this one, however close it was, it is relatively simple to sum up. Um, 13, 12 Chrome victory. Um, did we talk about this? I feel like we just talked about, no, we didn't. Um, no. obviously like I, like I've previously mentioned, uh, I think this is obviously moving pretty quick here just to who the standout players were for the Chrome. We can circle back to general game notes, but Jordan Wolf and Justin Gutterding again, top of the, top of the offensive statistics leaderboard for the Chrome for this game. Um, Mac on it appears there as well. Uh, another guy like Brendan Cavanaugh. Um, and what was another impressive game from John Galloway. Um, so this is truly the Chrome back season. Uh, obviously bouncing back from that loss to the Archers the night before. Um, but, but boy, let me tell you, the Water Dogs, I think they're an intriguing team. And, and, and you let me know what you think, Ben, but I think the Water Dogs could be the next Chrome-esque team, if you know what I'm saying, in terms of being "quote unquote" bad this season, but next season surprising teams. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, last season we saw Chrome lose five games by one goal or more, right? Yeah. Or one, or by only one goal. Yep. Sorry. So really close games, whether they were in overtime or regular. Um, but so far, the Water Dogs have lost two games by one goal this game and um, at the, against the Atlas. And then they lost nine to seven to the Archers, so by two goals. So these are very, very close margins, especially for a brand new team that has just come together in a really short period of time. In a normal length season, I would say these guys would bounce back and 
be pretty impressive in the back end of the season. Um, but I mean, they just got to hope that they can kind of turn turn that corner and uh, start picking up some win a win going into the um, elimination round. I do want to point out. Um, Connor Farrell had a bit of a bounce back. He went 11 for 22 or 50%. Um, a little bit of a bounce back from his previous game. Again, not as good as uh, he, he was in his first two games, um, as this is now Chrome's last game of the playing round. And they went 3-1. and one. Meanwhile, on the other side of the dot, Drew Simino went 7 for 14 or 50%, and Jake Withers went 7 for 12 and 58%. So pretty good showing by the faceoff men. Um, shout out Matt DeLuca, 100% save percentage, at a boy, face <laughs> one shot. Yeah, I, I don't um, know. I, I, I that, that's actually a good point. I, I, I'm curious to know when this Charlie Cipriano experiment will be over. Um, not that he's doing poorly, um, per se. But at this point, your own three. Why not let Matt DeLuca take a stab at it against um, against the chaos tomorrow? Uh, unless they truly think Chrome was just that good of a team that Cipriano just got, you know, destroyed in in a sense. See, I mean, he's played really well up until this game. He yes. had a bit of a rough game this time. He went thirty three percent. But up until now, he's had really solid performances. Um, so I don't think you can really count him out. I don't know if he's really an experiment still. Um, he, I feel like in the first two games, he kind of cemented himself as a starter. I mean, we've seen Blaze have bad games, like his first game against the Chrome. But then he immediately turned it around and set a single-game save record and then almost tied that record again tonight. So, um, I mean, I don't think you can really count Cipriano out just because of one bad game. Yeah. I just want to point out, though, um, it was in a, it, the, what the Chrome almost did to the Archers with a, with a little comeback, um, but pushing it into OT and then losing an OT mm-hmm. um, kind of happened tonight with the water dogs, the water dogs after three quarters were down 11 to three scored nine goals while the Chrome scored two and just barely lost by one goal. So, I mean, you can tell this team has heart. Not many, not many teams would um, keep grinding in the fourth quarter after being down by eight goals. That's kind of like a blowout range. Yeah. Yeah, mo- moving on. Um, uh, obviously, like I've mentioned, Wolf and Gutterding were pretty outstanding for the Chrome. Water Dogs, you have obviously the face-off guys, like Ben was talking about, but you also have guys like Kieran McArdle up there again, and uh, Steve DiNapoli and even Ben McIntosh. Um it was a relatively close bout at the face-off dot. Obviously, two very good groups of face-off uh, specialists between these two teams. Um, looking forward into their schedules, Chrome are the first team done with all four games, finishing with a three-and-run record and a five plus five goal differential. Um, so they should should be finishing top three. Uh, obviously, not one, but either two or three, depending on how Whip Snakes Archers shakes out. Uh, Water Dogs will play tomorrow against the Chaos, uh, trying to snap that three-game losing streak, but the Chaos will be trying to do the same thing. Uh, Like I've previously mentioned uh, earlier in this video, uh, it's going to be a tough game for both teams. Obviously, it's up in the air, um, but I think it should be a a pretty thrilling matchup. You got anything else to add? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, No, not really, just... You know, good, fast-paced game tonight. Um, interesting fourth quarter. And, I mean, so far the PLL Championship Series has been a lot of fun to watch, a lot of really good uh, competitiveness. Um, so, I mean, I'm really, like, this was 
these four games um, were really to get the rust off. Yeah. So I'm really excited to see how the elimination rounds go and just how high the level of um, play will really be for those, considering how high it's been for uh, these games. Yeah, there's still a lot to decide. Um, you pretty much know who the top three teams are going to be in the Whip Snakes, Archers, and Chrome. Uh, but below that, it's it's pretty much anybody's game. Um, Redwoods are are most likely going to remain in the in the four or five spot, uh, as I would assume the Atlas would probably remain in the five or six spot. Uh, and Water Dogs Chaos is is up in the air. It just depends who wins that game and and by how much. Um, but obviously, still a lot to decide. And, and like you mentioned, this is just the warm up, and the elimination round can only get better. Um, so that's about all I have. Uh, thanks again, men, for coming on. Um, yeah. All yeah, right. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Thanks again. Um, so that's it for today's episode, guys. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, like I said at the beginning of the video. Uh, it does help with the channel a lot, uh, and it shows that you enjoy this series. So we will see you guys next time. Peace.